Hello traders, welcome to a new day trading strategy video of mine. Today's video, we are going to be talking about the bid ask some strategy part two. So this is going to be a more advanced look into how to interpret and use the bid ask some strategy. I got a lot of different kinds of questions and different ways to, to look at it. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. In the first video, just to recap, if you haven't seen that, we talked about how uh, when price is flat or moving on low volatility, then you see either the bid spike or the offer spike, that could be a sign. If the bid spike, that could be a sign of an, of an uptrend uh, about to begin. And if the offer spike, that could be the sign of a downtrend about to begin. We also talked about divergence, where price is moving up, but bids are falling and offers are increasing, and that's a sign of bearish pressure. And finally, we also talked about what occurs when you see a massive rise in offers or a massive rise in bids at certain, at certain price points. So what I wanna talk about today is interpreting the 1% here, the 1% price range, and we're gonna be using this to look at accumulation and distribution. We're also gonna be talking about the more long-term look at uh, the bid ask sum strategy. And finally, we're also gonna be looking at what to do when the bids and the offers both uh, rapidly drop. <clears throat> I've done previous videos on accumulation and distribution where we would look at price, we would look at volume, and we would guess or uh, try to make our best prediction that institutions were either accumulating or distributing at a point of consolidation. The good news is that this indicator takes out all of the guesswork for you. We can actually find price spots where institutions or smart smart money, as they're called, have either accumulated or distributed. A sign of that is this. Let me show this right here. Let's only take a look at the offers here. Now, what you may notice, let me actually just take a look at the six hours. What you may notice here is a similar pattern that keeps happening time and time again. And that is when you see price move up, but then you see offers spike up as well. And typically when offers move up as price is moving up, that is not the greatest sign for the uh, for the uptrend. And then as the offers spiked upward, what we then see is the offers quickly falling off. So what does this kind of pattern mean? Because I did not talk about it in my first uh, video in depth. This represents distribution, where when price goes up and then we get these limit sell orders, we get limit sell orders that were filled and then price goes back and then the offers go back down to their normal level. This is typically a bearish sign because this shows that smart money is putting their limit sell orders and getting their limit sell orders filled by the dumb money uh, who are likely market buying at the highest possible price that they can. Uh, and, and then price goes down as you can uh, see here. We see this pattern a few times again where offers went up as price went up. So we know that price is more likely than not to go down. And then we see the offers went down. As price went down, as these limit sell orders got filled, or the sellers just lost interest at these lower levels. We see this again. Uh, offers spiked upward with price, bad sign for price. Then the offers quickly spiked down. As the limit sell orders likely got executed, likely got filled um, by retail traders who market bought those limit sell orders, and then we see price go down. And now I'm guessing, or I think it's very, very likely that throughout the course of this video that price is going to go down. Uh, reason I say that is we are seeing a ton of offers coming in. Uh, and this is really a prime example of distribution right in front of a, I mean, right in front of my face here. We went from 2.68 million uh, offers at this price right here. And then we are now at 8.91 million offers. And as price is going up, it is filling all of these offers. And I'm expecting that in the next uh, few minutes that we're going to see the offers fall off. Uh, as the offers are distributing, the potential sellers are selling and the retail traders are market buying those sell orders. And I think we're also probably going to see price decline very soon. So let's take a look at, uh, let's take a look at this. <laughs> I mean, yeah, if you, if you look at this here, price declined as I predicted and the offers declined as well. This is just a pattern that's going to happen time and time again where you see the offers quickly go up, then you see we, we reach a maximum, and then the offers quickly go down as the selling interest at that level has been tapped into and price goes down lower. So that's distribution. 
Now, what we also want to look at is accumulation, which is just going to be the opposite of distribution. So if we just turn on the bids, we can actually see, I think, a much better pattern of accumulation on the 24 hour, even though it does look kind of, uh, it looks kind of like tough data to, to look at here. Let's see if the six hour is any clearer. Yeah, I think right here. So accumulation is just gonna be the opposite type of shape that you would see with distribution. With accumulation, what you're gonna see is if price is moving down, but you see divergence where bids are actually increasing as price moves down, and then you quickly see a fall off in the bids which we saw at these price points here, that could represent institutional accumulation, where institutions limit by uh, limit by the best possible price point, or more likely, this is this might be a stop loss hunt. Uh, price went down to 6.47k. Price went a little bit lower to trigger stop losses. Uh, institutions put their limit orders to get those traders to market sell to their bids, and then their bids dropped as they got executed. And then we see some more bids coming into the market as price goes down and the buyers just find better prices to buy at. And then the bids drop again as price goes up because the buyers who wanted to buy here have bought. This is accumulation uh, right here. And just looking for other types of, uh, of accumulation here, I don't really think we see too much because price was going up and we would see more distribution uh, at these at these higher levels here. I mean, even if we looked at the one hour, we can we actually can see some accumulation here. The reason I say that is if you look here, we went from 2.09 million bids. Uh, we actually had a quick increase as price moved here to here. We found a lot of bids in this price zone. We went up to 2.85 million bids. So a percent, a percent increase of a good amount from 2 to 2.85. Bids dropped off very rapidly as the buyer's limit bought in and the dumb money market sold at the lowest possible price they could, and then price went higher after they accumulated their positions. So that's just one thing that I did want to, to mention as more of an advanced look for the bid ask sum strategy where we're looking at accumulation distribution, uh, where, where you see patterns like this, and it might look confusing at first, but if you really think about it, all it is with, with distribution is a lot of market buying into limit sell orders those limit sellers getting filled or getting pulled. And then after all of the traders who wanted to sell and all the traders who wanted to buy at this price point, price just goes lower because it can't find any more buyers to push price up any higher. And the sellers who had put up hard resistance here were successful and they pushed price down. Accumulation would just be the opposite. Okay, so now I wanna talk about more of a long-term look at using uh, the bid ask sum indicator because I've actually found that the bid ask sum indicator has been very, very clear when you go on very deep time frames. So with this, I'm not really interested in the 1%, but let's take a look at the five on the 30 day and let's maybe take a look at the six month as well. As usual, I like to just isolate one side so that I can see exactly what they're doing and then check what the other side is doing as well. All right, let's take a look here. So I do see some divergence that I do want <clears throat> that I do want to talk about. You can see here at these uh, at these times here, price does go up and offers go up, and then we see a quick fall off in offers as price is at its top. This is distribution, and price goes down uh, here again. Price here as as well, where the offer is increased, but the limit sellers got filled, and then we can see that the limit sellers uh, fell here here again, and I think here we had a little bit of distribution before price went down. If we look at the bids for any kind of accumulation that they may have had, I do see some around these price levels, but not surprisingly, I, you don't really see much accumulation in these uh, price levels here. Besides maybe a failed attempt at, at trying to find a large amount of buying here, uh, and then price just, went, price just went lower. So that's kind of putting on our, our thinking cap of looking for accumulation and distribution at, at a market bottom at a market top. But what we can also think about is another way that we can use the bid ask sum indicator. And this is the third way I'm gonna be talking about in this video. Whenever we see a drop in both the bids and the offers, typically that represents when price is going to reverse or retrace. So when you see the market going up and then out of 
I mean, a sudden you see the bids and offers both drop very rapidly. That represents that there aren't that many interested traders in that price zone. So it's going to be harder for price to continue moving uh, higher in, in that hypothetical because there just aren't enough interested buyers to continue to push price higher. And there aren't enough interested sellers to try to um, to try to sell at those higher levels. All right, so now let's just take a look at for a quick drop in both the bids and in the um, and in the offers. I think we see this one a little bit more often in the uh, shorter time frames here, as as you can see. So, but th th this was one, th this wasn't where they both dropped off, but this is one where we had offers increasing and the bids decreasing. And this is a very bad sign. Uh, and price does go down, as you can see. And then here we actually had the direct opposite. That's kind of funny. The bids actually increased very rapidly when price went here and then the offers decreased and then price went up, as you can see here. And then again, the offers increased here and the bids went down at this price point at 6.4 and we dropped down to here. The bids increased, the offers decreased. Uh, and then price went up. And now we can see some distribution up at these higher levels where these where traders are likely limit sell ordering, uh, placing limit sell orders at these higher levels to try to get a good fill and try to push price down lower uh, if they are successful after they get filled. If we look at the minute, <clears throat> yeah, I think that this one does show a few um, a few good examples of what, I was talking about for that. One example is this right here, where you can see the price on the 24 hour went up very quickly, but the offers actually increased when price went up. So not a great sign for the up move. And then after we got that increase, we got distribution with that quick drop off in offers and price goes down, not surprisingly. Uh, and then bids seem to be just overall increasing in the 24 hours, but the offers are still higher. Um, but the bids are, are, are kind of all over the place, but we can see some interesting, interesting things. One is a divergence here. Price went up at this price level here. That was the same point where I had mentioned, uh, actually I hadn't mentioned this at all, but this is where offers went up, bids went down as price went up. So this is double divergence. So this is where both the offers are going down, the offers are going up and the bids are going down. Uh, not a great sign. The, the bids actually go from 15 million all the way down to about 11.4. So really what this means is that there aren't enough interested buyers at these higher price levels up here. Um, when we see this energetic price movement, rapid price movement, we would expect to see many limit orders uh, trying to buy into this market, but we don't really see that here. We just really see tr traders who really want to sell. Uh, it doesn't really seem like there aren't th there are that many buyers who are interested in trying to get into positions here. And I think we can also see some accumulation at some price levels here. I think we'd have to zoom in more for that though. So this is really what you'd be looking at for the 5%. And the reason that I mentioned the accumulation, that's something you'd probably wanna look at it for the 1% because it's kind of harder to see accumulation distribution on the 5% because it would actually be happening on the 1%. So that's why you might wanna use these target ranges in different kinds of ways. When we look at the offers here at this live point here, this is just not looking good at all. Uh, looks like the offers did exactly what I, th I thought they would. They went up and then now they're down much lower. This could suggest that many strong hands might have just limit sold uh, to retail traders. So that's not a great sign. I think uh, price might have an easier time going lower in the short term than it will going higher in the short term. And if we look at the bids, bids are doing nothing here. That's not a good sign. We need to see energetic buying. We need to see buying pressure mount if we're gonna get price to go any higher. Uh, and we're not seeing that buying pressure here. So, ouch. Okay, but I also did wanna talk about in this video the really deep time frames, And talking about uh, the 5% on time frames such as this, the five month, the, the, the two year. And I think that, yeah, that one's kind of hard to read with Yeah, th this one's much more clear. This is just the six month. So we, we went back to February here. And we can actually see a very similar pattern to what I had mentioned with the 1% when we look at accumulation and distribution. Uh, we see some distribution here. 
I saw a price go up as the offers went up and then offers went down very quickly as the limit sellers got filled and price went down. Uh, yeah, here I just see some divergence where price went down, but also offers are going down. Let's see what the bids did. Oh, the bids accumulated. We, we saw that the bids actually increased and then as price went down, they quickly went down as well. Uh, when bids and offers go down, that can also indicate a reversal as they, uh, they both went down there, as you can see. And then the bids just began to mount their buying pressure and push price higher. Uh, yeah. We see, I think, very textbook accumulation here as well, where the bids skyrocketed up to here and then uh, went back down to here as their buy orders got filled just below support as well. And now it looks like bids are a lot lower, which typically isn't a great sign, um, but I think that we are going to see some change in the order book soon. But we do see something very interesting here in the past, uh, about in the past month or two. I'm seeing a rapid drop off in bids and I'm seeing a rapid drop off in offers and typically that indicates a reversal. Uh, so, you know, I'm not saying like bottom confirmed for, for Bitcoin here, um, but I wouldn't be surprised to see a short term bounce because we're seeing a drop off in bids and a drop off in offers. I think the only reason why we may see price going lower is if the offers actually begin to just really increase, showing that there are a lot of interested sellers and the bids just kind of go flat or decrease. That would probably be a bad sign. What would be a good sign is accumulation on the 1%. So if we actually see on the six month graph, bids increase very quickly, and then we see the bids actually decrease, we can see that that could be institutional accumulation with their orders getting filled. And I would like to see the 5% just overall increasing uh, and not really decreasing, as you can see here. So yeah, I just wanted to go over the other kinds of ways that one could use the bid ask some strategy. There are a lot of ways that, that, that you could look at this. And the main ways that we talked about were accumulation and distribution at market tops and market bottoms. Also divergence, uh, rapid drop-offs in bids and offers leading to a reversal. And also looking at the, the deeper time frames such as this, as the 30-day, the six-month, and some others as well, uh, to try to find types of patterns that may indicate, um, as you can see here, that may indicate the price is going to go up or down in the short term. As always, I do like to look at the bid ask some strategy in the short term here, because um, I have found that it has been very helpful. But I do want to say as an important note that just because the offers are higher than the bids doesn't necessarily always mean that price is going to go down. We need to look at the individual way that the bids and offers are changing relative to price. Uh, and that's really a lot more important here than what's higher, the bids or the offers. So that's just one more thing to keep in mind. And also I recommend changing between different kinds of time frames because they are gonna show you a lot of different kinds of information as you can see here. So with that, I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope that you get some use out of the bid ask some uh, indicator. And with that, happy trading.